Right, so let's get started. I'm using some lovely linen fabric. This is about 18 centimetres square um, to fit this four inch hoop. Um, you can use linen, you can use any sort of quilting cotton if you like, that's fine. Um, I've had a few questions about these hoops and the screw at the top this week, so I um, thought I'd show you this again. Um, these lovely hoops, um, which are made in the UK by LBZ, um, they're really beautiful beechwood hoops and they have that screw thread on the top which means that you can tighten them by hand um, and you can also um, use a screwdriver to tighten them up as well. So once you've got the tension of your fabric right you might want to just give it a little tighten like this. I'm just doing this to show you now um, just so you can see how that works. Normally I would do this bit a little later in the project um, but I do want this to be nice and secure um, I'm not planning on moving it at the moment. So. I'm going to use an air erasable pen. Mine's just got some tape on it so I don't get it confused with the ones that I'm selling. And this week I'm going to get my loose ends thread jar back. Haven't seen this for a little while. I love this. So basically any leftover bits from other projects I put in there. I've picked out a handful of lovely rainbow colours to use for this spiral today. Now we're really going to freestyle it this week. Okay, so I'm just going to tape my pen and I'm going to go for it. All right, it's been amazing to see lots of you stitching with loads of confidence this week, and this week we're really going to go for it. My spiral is completely freehand. It's not the neatest. Um, the top bit is a little bit wonky. I could draw over that if I wanted to. Do I want to? Do you know what? I'm going to leave it. <laughs> I'm going to embrace the wonkiness of that and just go for it. Okay, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to start with the darkest red and I've got three strands on my needle already. I've used a little bit of Thread Magic um, thread conditioner as well. And I'm going to start at the end with my chain stitches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the darkest red that I've pulled out and stitch through as many rainbow colours as I can. I'm not going to do them all on this video. Just so you know, I'm just going to show you how I'm getting started here um, and then I'm going to, over the next um, couple of days or evening or whatever, however long it takes me, I'm going to fill in the rest. So the chain stitch, we did link stitch um, a few weeks ago, didn't we, back in January I think that was. This is week 10. can't believe we're in double figures already. Time is weird. Anyway, we did link stitch um, and it's basically like that but... Um, joining them all together. Okay, so link stitch is also known as detached chain stitch and I think when you do this one it'll really make sense to you. Obviously the difference being here, and I, I pointed this out to you on just the stitch tutorial video, so if you haven't watched that um, yet, the main difference is that when you come up there, I come up at the bottom of that link and I'm going back down through exactly the same hole that I came up when we did the inv individual ones, we came up sort of slightly next to it, um, but super close, like basically the next um, thread along in the weave of the fabric. Um, we're going back down through the same hole here. I'm just using my thumb to push a needle through a little bit because I'm right at the edge of the hoop um, and I keep putting my needle through and not actually pushing it through far enough. So you can do that if you want to. It's just do whatever works for you. So we're basically joining all these links together and you get that beautiful, beautiful chain stitch. I prefer to work this from top to bottom. You can do it from right to left, left to right. Basically find a position of the hoop that works for you. Um, because if you feel comfortable, you'll get into a rhythm with it, you'll get into a groove with it and it'll feel much more natural. Um, so just see what works. Um, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> the effect is the same at the end of the day. No one's going to look at that and know which way around you held it. Unless it's mine and you're watching my videos, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> okay. It definitely feels nice when you've got into a rhythm with it. And I keep using my thumb to just hold that loop and um, do whatever works for you. Um, I'm just using standard floss here. Um, when we did the individual 
um, link stitch and lazy daisies I used pearl and I always prefer the effect of pearl personally I think I can get it much neater on those individual ones but I think um, the overall effect with the standard um, cotton here I actually don't mind it I haven't had time to experiment with the pearl thread yet um, for chain stitch but that is something that I am going to do you can use chain stitch for lots of different things you can use it for lettering if you want um, when you get to the end just pop a little tie stitch in at the end that's just a little stitch that goes over the end of that loop whoops I'm a bit messy on the back <laughs> proof that I need practice at chain stitch it's a little bit of a mess isn't it doesn't matter no one's going to see the back so tie off don't leave yourself too short I've had a, another couple of questions about tying knots at the back as well this week oops trim a bit more there ain't quite trim enough um don't leave yourself too short at the back because if you do it's really really hard to tie off I will do a separate video about that at some point soon Right, so I think that's enough of the dark red. So let's pull out another one. Let's pull out that one. <laughs> this is my loose ends jar. Um, but the next one, let's just check. Yeah. Um, I know that this one is shade 666. Also known as Father Christmas Red. <laughs> In our house. Oh, it's got a knot on the end. Oh, bonus. I love it when that happens. Already got a knot on the end. Excellent. That saves a bit of time, won't it? Um, yeah, some of the colours I get to know quite well because they're in some of my kits and things. Um, Tom's always testing me on them. <laughs> He's like, what colour is this? What colour is this? <laughs> Such a thread geek. Never mind. Right, okay. So I'm joining colours and what I'm going to do, just to make sure that we get that nice and neatly joined on, you need to come up right at the bottom of that um, last link on that chain. We'll just hide it in there so that we it makes it look like one continuous line. If you get it right at the bottom, it'll look absolutely seamless. Ta-da! Whoops, I've got caught again. Ah, the joys of stitching on video. <laughs> God, no worries. Happens to everybody. Don't panic. Um yeah, what you could do if um, you're wanting to just kind of play around with the colours and, and the effects of joining different colours and chain stitch, um, the colours that we used on the herringbone hoop are the beautiful, beautiful pink shades at 601 to 605 of DMC. Um, if you need a conversion chart to anchor, have a look on my blog because there's one on there. If I remember, I'll try and put it into a link to it into the um, blog post for this week. Um, but that's always a particularly lovely set of shades to use because um, because there's five of them and it, you can add 600 if you want the even darker pink in. Um, it just blends beautifully because you've got all of those shades. So that might be another thing to try. Um, with this kind of spirally design just to get that real ombre effect because obviously I've got quite a jump between the two reds here between the dark and the, the next shade along if you want to experiment with more of a ombre effect then you can do that oh I've got my I've got my loop in a tangle here haven't I I've got myself in a right old tangle right let's just see I think that's just because I had my thread twizzled at the back no worries there we go, let's just pull through there and see what that happens. Oh, is that right? Is that right? No, I've got twizzled again, that's okay. Whoops, right, oh, oh, there we go. Well, that's what happens when you pull your chain, isn't it? <laughs> Whoops, I didn't mean for that to happen, did I? Oh well, hang on, there's nothing on the camera now, sorry. I pulled the chain stitch too far. Oh, there we go. Hang on. Bear with me. Right, hang on. Can I catch this one? Can I catch that one? What am I doing? What's going on? Well, that's good to know, isn't it? If you pull, if you pull the thread, that's what happens. The chains come. And I think this one hasn't because when I've actually come through the loop, I've actually managed to catch one of the strands. Oh, and now I'm a... Oh, well, it's all... Oh, 
<laughs> Do you know what? I could cut this out. I could cut this out, couldn't I? Oh, but I really want to keep it real on these videos. These things happen to the best of us. So, do you know what? I'm just going to leave it in. Apologies for that there. <laughs> now we know what happens when you pull the chain stitches out. They all come out. Makes sense. They're all joined up. But that one stayed in position because I'd managed to catch one of the threads when I stitched it. Never mind. Okay. Well, good to know. Um, <laughs> Tom's mum always used to say that with knitting, she was an amazing knitter. Um, and she always used to say that one of the most important things with knitting was to kind of know what your mistakes were and then know how to put them right. And I really think that's just really important for loads of different crafts. It doesn't matter if you go wrong, um, but actually knowing how to put them right or knowing what happens when you do something like pull a thread, um, what's going to happen? Um, I think that's really, really important. So, um, yeah, let's leave that in. <laughs> knowing how to fix your mistakes is a good thing because then you'll know how to problem solve. Okay, let's just carry on with this thread then. There we go. Put a few more chains in. I like how this is building up. And you know what? I'm glad I left the wonky bit in. I wasn't sure about it. I don't know what it's going to look like by the time I finish the rest of it. I don't know if I'm going to regret leaving the wonky bit in. Let's see. Um. You can see that the air erasable pen has disappeared a little bit already and weirdly I can actually see it better through my phone camera than I can in real life so at least it's showing up for you. <laughs> I just put that tie stitch on the end because I feel like my thread's getting short now. Don't worry about those bits at the back, no one's going to see. Um, so yeah, what, what you might want to do with this design is draw little bits of the spiral back on again um, as you go along. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to draw on a section that I'm going to stitch in the next colour, which will probably be orange. I think I'm going to move to the next shade on the next bit. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time this week using these lovely colours. I'm going to finish stitching this and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. And here we go. Ta-da! It's all right, isn't it? I really like the chain stitch. It really is relaxing. I'm glad I left that bit in. Um, what I've decided that I'm going to do, um, because I didn't get through as many rainbow colours as I'd hoped to, I'm going to put it in a different coloured hoop, move it up slightly as well, I think, and I'm going to write some words around in the spiral and stitch them on this week. So um, that's not going to be in this video, but I'll probably put it on Instagram. So stay tuned for that. Happy stitching. Um, yeah, it'll be nice to stitch this this week. I um, might use this purple, maybe. I'm just kind of thinking out loud now, aren't I? That's okay. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to see your spirals. Enjoy. 